The priests of the Archdiocese of Ernakulamangamali gather together on Monday the 20th of February to celebrate a special commemorative Requiem Mass for former Archbishop Joseph Cardinal Parakartul. That day was the 36th anniversary of the demise of the Cardinal. Contrary to the normal practice, about 200 priests reached the Archbishop's house this year for a concelebrated Holy Mass in the main chapel of the Archbishop's house because the Cathedral Basilica, where the Cardinal's mortal remains lie buried, is still closed to public worship. It was a practice every year for the Cardinal's friends and family members to gather around his tomb in the Basilica on this day. However, the family members also came to the Archbishop's house this year to join the commemoration services there. During his homily, Reverend Dr. Anthony Nariculum, the rector of St. Mary's Cathedral Basilica, made a very personal and hearty sharing on the Cardinal's life and services. He said, like many saintly people in hopes of the past, Cardinal Parakat was also a man who took his spiritual practice with extreme seriousness. He would never fail in his daily celebration of Holy Mass and weekly confessions. Even when he used to travel to Rome, the first thing he would undertake was a visit to St. Peter's Basilica to make his confession. Indeed, Cardinal Parakat was a deeply spiritual man, a man of integrity and justice, Despite having been appointed and elected to some of the highest ecclesiastical offices, like becoming the first cardinal of the Sira Malabar Church, the president of both the Sira Malabar Bishops' Conference and Kerala Catholic Bishops' Conference, as well as the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India, consultor to the Sacred Congregation for the Oriental Churches and member of various international pontifical commissions, etc. Despite all these, he never abused his authority or good offices to get his personal projects approved or executed. He would never go for underhanded dealings nor circumvent due procedures. He would always respect the views of others and wait for due procedures to complete. He was a good personal friend of Pope Paul VI. He could have got a lot of things approved if he ever wished. Instead, Cardinal Paracardinal had made a conscientious decision in his mind not to follow such unholy practices as it is being alleged of church hierarchy today. Dr. Nariklim said that during the course of his episcopate, Cardinal Parakatul's mind and outlook underwent a conversion of sorts from being a very conservative person to being one of the most progressive ecclesiastical heads of India in general and the Sri Malabar Church in particular. That was primarily because of two significant events. In the field of liturgy, he became a great visionary who initiated many liturgical reforms with prophetic courage. The Cardinal could see far beyond his contemporaries. According to Dr. Nariculum, the first event that decisively influenced the thoughts and actions of Cardinal Parakartal was the Second Vatican Council, in which he was an enthusiastic participant in all the four sessions, spanning three years. In his autobiography, Cardinal Parakartal gratefully remembers that he was immensely blessed by God, not only to have actively participated in all the discussions, but also to have ex exercised his voting right on all the 540 times when voting took place in the Council. Imbibing the renewal thrust of, of this greatest ecclesial event of the millennium, Cardinal Parakartal since then became the avant-garde liturgical and church reformer in India. More particularly in the Sira Malabar Church, he became a champion of indigenization and enculturation of Christianity in India. He proudly wrote, I stand for neither Latinization nor dechildenization. I stand for Indianization of our present liturgy as far as it is possible. He used to say, I would prefer to be called an Indian Catholic rather than Roman Catholic or Syrian Catholic. One can be authentically an Indian and a Catholic at one and the same time. Reading and responding to the science of the times, the methodology consistently adopted by the Second Vatican Council Fathers also became the style and attitude of Cardinal Parakartal in his approach to pastoral exigencies. He was convinced that fidelity to the tradition should not be a blind veneration of the past. The second event that positively influenced Cardinal Parakatil, according to Dr. Nadikulam, was the Church in India Today seminar held in Bangalore 1969. It was organized under the leadership reverend Dr. Amalol Pavadas, who was the director of NBCLC then. This seminar, and in particular its firebrand organizer, had such an impact on the Cardinal that he himself shortly organized a series of such sessions by Dr. Amalul Pavadas for the priest of his archdiocese here in Ernakulam. That was the way the Cardinal inspired and prepared the minds of the priests here to welcome and undertake all kinds of the, of the liturgical reforms emanating from the Second Vatican Council. Dr. Anthony Nariculum concluded his homily by stating that the renewal spirit and the progressive liturgical attitude 
so passionately held by the Archdiocese today testify to the lasting impact of the Cardinal Joseph Paracartel. Like him, he exhorted, we the priests and faithful of the Archdiocese today should also never give up the spirit of justice and truthfulness. Indeed, we should hold fast to his fidelity and straightforwardness until our death. The Cardinal's passion for justice and honesty did not always bring him success. Dr. Nariculum recalled, in, in fact, he was often misunderstood and misinterpreted. One may even say that his virtues became his apparent failures. Let Cardinal Paracartum inspire and strengthen us to be just and faithful to the end. Thank you.